This will be a signed voice interpretation uh, based on a video that was sent by Jen Starr Harvey. So thanks, Jen. Um, I have I included the URL in in the sites of LMA Lens. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and begin that video so you can kind of track the timing. And this is all cold. This is the first time I've ever seen it. So wish me luck. Here we go. It starts off by asking who are the biggest stakeholders? And then it defines what a stakeholder is, one who has shared who has a shared interest as an enterprise. Here she goes. Typically businesses invest and the larger the organization, the more they invest and the more voting power they have. The smaller stakeholders are still significant. However, they're not as potent and have a, a sway in their ability to uh, vote. Um, often they can, they'll submit their opinions and feelings. Now in deaf education, the largest stakeholders should be, and who should have the power in those situations, are parents. Uh, typically, they're the largest stakeholder hearing parents. And I don't disagree, you know, they, they try and make the best decision for their deaf children. They go to the doctor, to the audiologist, to school assessments, place them in an educational placement and uh, there's a lot of information that they try to but that only continues until 18 until they're of legal age that doesn't mean that they discontinue that role there's still that connection but the overall obligation to be a stakeholder is no longer theirs that's where it transitions to them to be their own stakeholder the other stakeholder is the interpreting community and there is a significant financial, time, educational investment into this group, into the social uh, aspects to, you know, and they've worked through their ranks to get licensed and certified and gain abilities and degrees, ability to earn money. And if that were to change, it would affect the interpreting community significantly. However, again, the largest majority of people in the, in the world are, are hearing. And if that were the, if they weren't able to get employment through interpreting, they could find other opportunities. If they didn't want that field, they could find another field and almost go to any uh, secondary educational placement and get and study to, to become an uh, employable in a different field. The deaf child and deaf adults including deaf teachers, deaf people that work within the field of deaf education are also significant stakeholders. And any changes to deaf education significantly impacts those two uh, groups uh, because be just by surely being born into a deaf um, life, they're they have no respite from being deaf. It's 24 seven, all their physical, mental, emotional, all that is invested regardless. Uh, even outside when they're on their own, after they've gone out of their parents' home, even until the time they get buried. And there's significant investment. There's deaf individuals as adults who invest in the children and deaf children even children and grandchildren um, know what it is like to be day, deaf day in, day out. And every single day, they experientially know, and so they are significant stakeholders, both deaf children and deaf adults. And I would argue they're the largest stakeholders. Uh, businesses in the field of that, of working with the deaf have similar, or excuse me, Similar to 
large establishments, the most powerful stakeholders should be deaf adults and deaf children. The other stakeholders should be able to add input, but really the dynamic has really been shifted. The, there should be, because of less investment, the other stakeholders, the hearing establishments, interpreters should have a smaller investment. They have a wider and more powerful investment, ironically. It's really a, an odd shift of, of power. The end. Thank you.